What is up everybody? This is Steve from Blockchain Bulls. So grab some coffee and let's talk some Ripple. So it appears as of yesterday, the founder of Ripple made an announcement that the SEC is probably going to sue them. And some of you may have purchased a lot of Ripple or you might have heard of Ripple and I think it's been a coin over the last two years or so that has brought some people into the cryptocurrency world from the prospectus of trying to make an investment for the purpose of gains or for long-term value. And uh, if you think back to about three years ago, about three years ago roughly, uh, Ripple was really considered what a lot of people would call a uh, SHIT coin, a trash coin. Um, even uh, Vitalik Buterin uh, recently called it a SHIT coin in his tweet um, as he feels that they were trying to throw Ethereum under the bus, you know, by claiming that Bitcoin and Ethereum were Chinese controlled and at least Ripple's not Chinese controlled. So that's somehow their shining moment and something that gives them virtue that allegedly blockchain and ERC-20s don't have. Um, but what the SEC is alleging against Ripple is that the XRP token that was generated by Ripple and basically distributed by them and held by them um, is, in a sense, a security and not a currency. And if you think about what makes Bitcoin unique from anything that existed before it, you have that decentralized distribution of power and you don't really have anybody in control of it. Plus, when you buy a Bitcoin, you're not making any sort of investment into a business and the um, basically getting a share of that company um, with Ripple with X and their XRP token, you kind of in a sense are getting that, um, and that's what's to be disputed. I mean, I can't say for sure, but you can look at the SEC's argument uh, that's being alleged by the founder of Ripple, and you can see that there is some validity to those statements. So, what what does that mean? Well, it means that if if in fact they were issuing a security and not a currency, that the SEC would have the bounds to step in and say, hey, you, as a business, before you sold this, you should have legally registered this as a security. And there are a lot of different loopholes and things that have to be gone through for the protection of the consumer um, and for other reasons for the government, but mainly to protect us and make sure that before we buy a security in a business that we're not buying into you know a ponzi scheme a pyramid scheme or anything that could be a complete fraud and rip us off you know a business can still pr provide a, a registered security and still fail as a business and you could still lose your value that happens all the time on the stock market uh, especially with penny stocks and stuff like that but you know if we look back to just a few years ago um, i can't remember the exact value that i first got into ripple I'm going to guess that it was like 2.8 cents or something like that. So, um, you know, I could be slightly wrong, but I do seem to remember telling some of the other friends that I had that like, hey guys, that's, you know what, I'm, I'm browsing the top 200 coins. I think Ripple's going to be a big one, right? And this was probably about before they had any financial institutions on board with their um, exchange system. So next thing you know, Ripple shoots up at that time to, you know, 20 plus cents. I roughly 10x my money, and I think I moved into other altcoins, and I've bought and sold Ripple a few times since then. And then you have around that December time period, um, you know, right towards the end of the last big bull run, where Ripple saw massive amounts of cash injection and a lot of hype. And you know, I don't personally remember it really getting above two dollars, but you can see here from its price history that it shot up really high in price so to over three dollars, and then it took a massive uh, price dump, as practically every cryptocurrency did during that time period you know even bitcoin for the last two years has seen lows in the 3000 range and stuff like that so it's definitely been something that's affected the rest of the industry but lately we've seen ripple go again and go from that 20 some odd cents that it had held really consistently for the last couple years and shoot up into the 60 plus cents range and then now we're seeing a retracement as you know ripple is coming out and saying proactively uh, to their credit I guess and it's confusing some investors but you know why would why would they come out before the SEC has officially filed a lawsuit and claim that the SEC is going to sue them so this is a article on fortune that you guys can read if you want to check it out if you haven't already 
if you're heavily invested in Ripple, I definitely suggest that you look at this situation from a lot of angles, you know, because this is something that can be seen completely as FUD, uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, that could be used to shake the faith of investors in Ripple. Um, you know, would, would that be something that would be uh, ethical if the founder of Ripple would come out and purposely try to disrupt their own value of XRP uh, just to reduce its selling price? Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, it's possible, but I don't think that that would be his motive. You know, I'm not, I don't think that he's trying to undervalue or devalue their currency below where it was at in that 50, 60 cent range and purposely drop it to right now in the 40s. Um, you know, I don't know what the low is. We could see it go back all the way to the 20 cent range if, if consumer confidence doesn't hold. But would they do that so that they could buy back more of it? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I don't think that Ripple is really has an interest in uh, buying back a lot of their coins just to see future gains come back from them. And part of the reason is that, you know, when Ripple started and they created that XRP token, they created an initial amount. Um, and that initial amount was like their seed fund and you know we've been able to buy those tokens and then over time they released more of these xrp tokens so they kind of have a funding an evergreen funding and, it, and it's really to their benefit to have their token worth as much as possible in the sense of being able to sell or distribute any of the newly unlocked tokens that come out um, on their schedule but one one thing that really separates ripple from ethereum Bitcoin, and some of the other tokens and currencies that are genuinely out there, is that when you buy Bitcoin, you're buying a currency, a commodity that you can sell and trade amongst each other. And it's true that you can do that for XRP as well. Um, but what Ripple does when they institute their payment network into a financial institution is that they don't use the XRP token as the medium of exchange. So, you know, if um, XYZ Bank in China wants to send ABC Bank in the United States funds through the Ripple network. They're not exchanging XRP tokens in there to produce that transaction. They're in fact trading a white labeled token that was generated on their back end, which is kind of counterintuitive when you think about it. And I think some in, that's caused some investors to heavily scrutinize Ripple over the last few years uh, to say like, well, what are you doing here? You know, this to some degree smells like BitConnect. Um, you know, and if you remember BitConnect, it was a big hype. Um, you know, you'd invest your Bitcoins, you'd get BitConnect tokens out of it that you could at that time sell. It turned out that it was, you know, probably a Ponzi scheme and, and a complete ripoff. Uh, people did not get their original Bitcoins back to my knowledge. So, you know, it kind of makes you think like, well, why am I investing in this XRP token to, you know, to fuel the value in these tokens that then should be kind of used as a banking medium in Ripple's net um, to sell to these financial institutions. And since that's not the case, that really means that this XRP token, you know, is either left as something that consumers have to just buy, sell and trade amongst ourselves, which we don't have the same um, problems with sending money necessarily that banks have. I mean, sure, if you're going to send money internationally, you'd want it to be fast and free or as close to both of those as possible. But, um, you know, we're not going to see more value in XRP simply because more banks get on board with it because they're not buying that token. So I guess that's my main point, uh, where if you want to get in on Bitcoin, you have to buy Bitcoin, you have to exchange Bitcoin, um, you know, but that that's kind of where I see the SEC having a lot of um, grounds to stand on to claim that the XRP token is in fact a security, nothing much more than an investment into the business of Ripple with their XRP token. So drop in the comments, let me know what you guys think. Um, have you been a long-term XRP holdler? Are you recently getting into it and trying to figure out, you know, is XRP good for you? Uh, that sort of thing. I mean. When you look at the statistics, it's definitely been the one of the top tokens for a long period of time. Uh, right now, sitting currently at top three with the third highest market cap at over $22 billion um, total market value. So, you know, it's no longer down there in the you know top 100 hiding amongst them. It's been pretty consistent there. 
mainly because of the initial support that it saw two to three years ago in that December 2017, January 2018 timeframe. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean that it's any more valid than some of these others. Now, here's something if you're looking for some alternative coins to XRP, but you still want to be able to get some of the same functionality. So if you believe in the the problem that Ripple is solving and you'd like to be able to invest in coins that I feel are similar to those, uh, I would take a look at Stellar Lumens, Stellar Lumens and Cardano. They both have a somewhat similar uh, solution to a similar problem. And Cardano has been like a top 20 coin for a long period of time. Here we see it at number eight. Um, is it a good buy at 16 cents roughly right now today? I, I think it could be. Um, you know, I've, I've seen it go below 10 cents quite a while ago. I've seen it go, I think it's gone up to close to a dollar. I haven't taken a look at it in a long time. Um, I recently have gotten out of Cardano um, just personally and moved it into other coins. But, um, you know, it's still possible that Cardano could come in. But Stellar Lumens right here at 11, this has been around for a few years too. And I feel like if you're interested in, in the idea and the concept of Ripple, but you'd like to look into a token that is actually more used inside of their uh, main program, that this would be something to consider. So take a, take a look at Stellar Lumens. You know, you can look at their website, you can check out their um, technology and see how their solution is basically doing the same thing as Ripple. They've been around, I would say, uh, roughly equally as long. So this is something where at least they have that staying power and credibility as well. But I would consider this as an alternative asset to put in your portfolio. And you can find Stellar on Coinbase, uh, many other different exchanges and wallets. So it's not an oddball, which makes it easy to send and receive um, straight from my wallet to your wallet, um, pay, pay your friends and things like that, send money internationally. It does some of that same thing. Um, and also there was recently some banks who have, um, instead of getting Ripple, I've heard that they have gone to Stellar Lumens as their solution. So this is definitely something that when a bank is looking to fix some of that problem, that they're getting requests for proposals from both of these parties. And uh, recently, I forget the name of the exact financial institution, but there was a major financial institution that did take up the Stellar Lumens solution. So um, consider that. Stay tuned for some more videos.